What up, though? <laughs> the first academic conference I ever presented at was in November of 2010 with some of my familia from scratch at the Society for the Study of Gloria and Saldua, and Saldua El, Mundo Zundo, El Mundo Zurdo conference. For an undergraduate Chicano with aspirations in, in the academy, in academia, El Mundo Zurdo was a rare experience. To be completely surrounded by the many shades of brown bodies and our allies in an academic setting wasn't something I appreciated until a few years later. Over the next couple of years, conference after conference, I was exhausted. Everyone is tired after conferences, but the exhaustion that comes with a concentrated dose of microaggressions, imposter syndrome, and the, in, and the inability to not be on requires a different type of healing. Knowing that conferences can be energizing and never being able to replicate that experience is frustrating and discouraging. Until last year, when I had the chance to attend Computers and Writing for the first time in Rochester, shout out Rochester, CNW was a different kind of, ex of, different kind of conference experience. For me, it marked the first time since I joined Rhetoric and Writing Studies that I felt comfortable, that I felt like I belonged in a space that I wanted to invest my time into. Now, I may be a bit biased. They did give me an award. <laughs> and pay for my travel and stuff like that. But that is very necessary. Every conference has some kind of diversity initiative, but very few conferences do the work beyond the award. CW isn't magically an inclusive space. I know it can tell that there are a lot of hardworking, uh, hardworking invested people working to make CW what it is. Honoring and understanding the work that has been invested in this space, I want to use the rest of my time here to make two very important points to me. The first point is about the politics of diversity and inclusion. CNW is an, is an exciting academic space because of the range of work we do. Like-minded scholars who, whose academic interests usually include a few commas. It's a big enough conference to include so many ideas, yet small enough to be able to engage. The thing about inclusiveness is that as you bring in more voices, they brought in more than just the optics. We brought in the histories, experience, critiques, and perspectives. I'm happy to be seen, but I also want to be heard and respected. Realize that as marginalized people, it takes a lot for us to speak up. Because of that, be conscious that if we are choosing to speak up, we are saying something that we feel is important. Keep that in mind. What we say is coming from somewhere. The second point that I want to leave you with is an acknowledgement of labor and a challenge. In my experience, so much of the work behind this award and the folks who made this conference ex inclusive has been possible because of the labor of women. The award is named after two women. The people who organize the award are women. The, the people running the GRN are mostly women. We all know that women are overwhelmingly responsible for the service obligations in our departments, conferences, and organizations. As a new scholar and as, as and someone a part of the CNW community, I want to help lead a more concerted effort by my cis male colleagues to do better, not just in the boys club kind of ways, but in real effort to be inclusive across class, gender, race, and disability. This work is difficult and ongoing, requiring that we all acknowledge our privilege and decenter ourselves while still being engaged. But it is necessary because our relations and our sustained socially just community depends on it. Thank you. <laughs>